Hello, and welcome to another Dolphin Financial Radio Show. My name is Dan Wendell, and I'm your host today and owner of Dolphin Financial Group here in Clearwater, Florida. Today's topic is on buffered notes. Now, you may know these as structured notes, buffered indexes. Um, sometimes people will refer to them as um, buffered, just straight buffered notes. And most people are seeing these from their financial planner, financial advisor, or their stockbroker. And they're coming to me and saying, what are these all about? So in today's show, we're going to talk what they are, how the pros and cons of a buffered note, and also how they apply to people. Should you be thinking about using this? Should you stay away? And to help me with that, I'm going to bring in my co-host, Tony Shore, who knows nothing about buffered notes. So he'll be able to be the test case and ask the silly questions that aren't silly at all, that most of you probably have about it. If I can get him to stay awake, I'll be right back with Tony in a moment after I play the brief intro, which features both Tony and Tony, I. Tony, let me tell you something. We're doing a podcast today, but we're also on video. You're about to listen to an episode of Dolphin Financial Radio. Each week, host Dan Wendell, a certified financial planner, is joined by his sidekick, Tony, to discuss financial issues, news, and tips. Dan keeps the focus on retirement planning, and Tony keeps the show fun and down to earth. Now, let's have some fun planning your retirement and begin the show. There we have it, Tony. Oh, he's asleep. He's asleep. I make I make a case for Tony. You're gonna help me. And there, hey Tony, wake up. We're talking about structured notes what? today. Oh, structured wait. notes. Derivatives. Structured no- <laughs> <laughs> hey, you we're know- talking about structured notes. <laughs> I'm gonna, they're uh, dropping like flies out there, Dan. Why yeah, are we talking know, about structured notes? I know because they're becoming popular and people are asking me about them and I'm mm. seeing some practical uses of it and I figured why not? So we're going to talk specifically about buffered notes and have you heard of this stuff, Tony? Have you heard of buffered notes? notes well i've never heard of structured notes i mean maybe i've heard the term i have no idea what that is but i have heard about uh buffered stocks like you can purchase stocks and it's buffered so if it if the stock drops uh like a buffered portfolio so if that portfolio drops or particular stock or portfolio drops you only have to participate in some of the losses but then again you only get some of the gains so there's a there's a ceiling and a floor that they set for a setup for a year and so in that year if the stock tanks again because you know as stocks do you know maybe the corona the vaccines don't work or the two trillion dollars worth of uh uh, stimulus uh, affects companies in a negative way, and all of a sudden the stock tanks. I'm not going to lose a full 20. percent I'm only going to lose 10. But then if the stock goes way up, as it's want to do, uh, then I don't gain 20. percent I only gain five or 10. Is that? Do I have that right? That's well, all I that, know. Is that what you're talking about? Well, you were talking about buffered with an R. I was talking about buffet, like pizza buffet. Oh, you, Buffett, you Buffett. <laughs> Buffett stocks. Well, that's Warren's a whole different story. Now that Whoa, I do know buffet. about. Buffet with the, the uh. T is silent. No, um, <laughs> you're right. No, that that is kind of how it relates. You are you. We've talked about indexed annuities before. Sure, so you're familiar with the whole, you know, caps on the upside, downside protection. So what these are, it's just. So you might hear a buffered note. You might hear a return enhanced notes. That's a popular one. Return enhanced notes. Sounds exciting. Um, Market link CDs. So these things are out there and all they are are structured notes. So let's just very briefly say, what is a note? A note is like an IOU. It's a, you know, a, a house note would be a house loan. So what you're doing is you're buying a product. You're buying, it's not a necessarily a bond. It's a structured note. It's a different term. So you're giving the money to somebody and they're going to give the money back to you in some way. How they're going to give it back to you? It's all in the details. So with a buffered note, you're giving the money to a large bank. It's going to or be investment a, firm, investment bank, right? It's going to be Goldman Sachs, Barclays, sure. HSBC, or, you know, 
you living in Southern Canada, uh, RBC, Royal Bank of Canada. So these are the huge companies that are providing the underwriting. So you sure. give them the money and then they say, we're going to give it back to you. And in the, in the case of a buffered note, they're going to give it back to you with some terms. They're going to say, as an example, we're going to give you back, we're going to give you a 15% buffered note. Hmm. And we're going to tie it to, and this is where the derivatives comes in, another word, fancy word for an index, right? So we're going to tie it to the S&P 500, okay? So if the S&P 500 goes up, you're happy. You're going to give you the gain. We're going to give you interest. But if the S&P 500 goes down, you're going to, we're going to give you a buffer. And let's say they say a 15% buffer. What they're saying at this point is, we're going to eat the first 15% of losses. So if this thing is down 27%, the S&P is down 20%, 27% over the timeline, we're only going to, you're only going to lose 12% because we're going to eat the first 15. Sure. 15% is the buffer. Sure. So the buffer can be 10%. It could be 50. It could be whatever the company wants. So they determine the, the, the what the structured note, what the buffers are. Right. Right. So this is becoming more popular for people who are interested in saying, well, the market's kind of at a high. I'm nervous about where we're going with this. So I want some sort of downside protection. And so we've seen that in the use of fixed indexed annuities, but we're also seeing it in the use of structured notes known as buffered notes. Hmm. So they like this idea of getting some. But is there usually a cap on the up end? To, isn't there a cap on the top end too, where you can only make like 15%, they'll eat the first 15% loss. But if the market goes up 27%, you're only going to get 15% of the gains. Is Absolutely. that true? Right. Because if, if there was just a 15% buffer with no cap on the upside, everyone would do it, right? What's yeah. That, right? yeah. Give, me, give me, you're going to eat the first 15. What's in, what's the catch? So yeah. every buffered note, has a catch sure and the most obvious and in, in, in initial one is the ca literal cap on the upside gain like a fixed index annuity does exactly so yeah. a fixed index annuity is with an insurance company yep and there's usually a cap or a participation rate meaning you're right. only going to get so much well maybe we'll cap you at five percent interest and those have become so popular, Dan, that now what you're saying is the investment companies have these big banks and investment companies and investment companies that offer them, like Gradient Investments, who, who we have both worked with, uh, they uh, have said, hey, <laughs> this is really popular. Why don't we offer this but tie it to the market? That's right. So people, because with an insurance company, you're you're parking your money with the insurance company. They're giving you a limit on the upside and their floor is zero. So they don't give a buffer. They just say, if the market's negative, we'll give you zero. So the market mm -hmm. could be down 50% and we're going to give you zero. But because they're giving, they're taking all the loss protection, principal protection, they're very limiting on the upside. Additionally, with an insurance company, they're usually a minimum of three years. Sometimes they'll go up to 10 years. So you have this long-term horizon. The structured notes have come up and said, let's, let's compete with these indexed annuities and let's create a buffered index. So what they'll do is they'll say, let's, let's do a shorter term. Now, some of these go out five years, three years, but a lot of them are one year or 18 months. Actually, a little, little, key, a little point you need to be aware of, you want to get one that's a year and a day. And that's for long-term capital gains tax purposes. That's an advanced. Ah, that's why, that's why you see the eighteen months or the year and a month. And ah, like okay. Three hundred sixty-six days or three hundred seventy days. Yep. Because they want to have you hold on to this for a year, so you pay a better tax rate. <clears throat> yeah. That being said, um, the difference is you're not giving your money to insurance company. You're giving your money to a bank, investment bank, and you don't have all the protections of an insurance company. So. The biggest risk with these buffered notes is that whatever bank you use goes bankrupt. So let's say we go, and I'm going to pick on Goldman Sachs because they're a huge sure. company. Very popular. People know about them. People say, great, I'm going to buy a buffered note with Goldman Sachs. They're going to give me a 10% buffer. So they'll eat the first 10% on the downside. So if I'm down seven, I get, I'm down actually zero because that's wiped out, but they're going to cap me at 
12% on the upside. Okay. So I have my, my little range, I'm yep. gonna, you know, but the difference is with, with the bank is if we're down 50%, if we're down 50, five, zero, and the buffer is 10, you're going to be down 40. So you could yeah. still get hurt with these. There's no, yes. it's not unlimited. You know, it's, there's unlimited downside. You only yeah. losing. The it's time. not complete principal protection. Like some fixed index annuities offer. Right now they make structured notes that are principal protected, but then their upside is much lower. Like an index sure. annuity. So yeah. you have to find one like three percent or something crazy right, or four. Right. Yeah. Right. And so we're gonna, you know, so they're all I call it a buffered note because you know, some people call it buffered index, but remember it's a structured note. It's a it's a it's an actual financial product with you in the bank. So let's talk about some pros and cons of these. We mentioned the pro is you get that downside protection. Sure. And I mean, because it sounds on face value, it sounds great. But I've heard you grumble a little before, so I'm interested in your take because, you know, I've heard the pitch from the companies. Uh, they make them sound, uh, this is, you know, it's a no-brainer, right? Right. And it's the same gripes I have with index annuities. There's definitely some issues with these, and I want people to be aware of them. Sure. Now, just as a quick reminder, I am an investment advisor. I'm a certified financial planner. And this is a discussion about these products. I'm not suggesting whether or not you should buy one. This is not investment advice. But my kids will repeat that disclosure at the end. So we can. Yes, <laughs> they so, will. Um, all right. So there's downside protection. That's the most obvious benefit to these. The other pro sure. is that it narrows the risk. So you're saying, all right, I'm going to I'm going to alleviate a little bit of the pressure as to where this might go. You might say, I think the market's going to dip. I just don't know when I want to get back in, but I'm not sure. So you're going to narrow your risk by putting a buffer on there. And you could set the size of the buffer. So you say, I need 20 percent downside protection. So now you're really limiting how much you're going to be at risk. Right. And um, it's a different type of asset. You're not actually buying the market. So if the S&P is the index it's tied to, all right, so I'm giving the the investment bank my money. Sure. Um, they're going to give me, and they're going to tie it to the S&P. You're not actually owning the S&P. You're not, your money's not in the S&P. Right. The bank has it. They do what they want with it. <clears throat> I'm not going to get into how they design these products and the derivatives and, and sure. the call options and all that. But suffice to say, you don't actually own the S&P 500. So it's mm. different than actually owning stocks and bonds. It's a diversification because it's different. It's a note. It's not a stock. It's not a bond. It's a note. So you're getting some diversification there, which is a plus. A plus. And then <clears throat> timelines. Because you could set and pick which ones you want to buy, you could structure these or you could buy these to fit your timeline. You might say, I need the, I need the money in two years, so let's buy a two-year note. I need the money in in you know 13 months. Let's buy a 13 month note. So you can build a retirement income plan or some sort of investment plan that suits your timeline. We use Yeah, and that notes. is that is a positive, like you say, although there's a negative to it too, because you're locking that money up for that period of time. So there are the downside would be lack of liquidity, right? Maybe I'm jumping right. ahead. Let's talk about the downside. So we got the upside is the bull. Yeah, downside's the bear. Looks the bear, like that bear. gummy bear. That's the gummy bear. <laughs> the gummy like bear it. that's over there, I guess. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, <clears throat> let's talk about the major downsides of these. The cons. Okay. First okay. and foremost is you're with a bank, and like I mentioned already, that bank can go bankrupt. The you can be tied to the S and P five hundred. <clears throat> the S and P five hundred can go up a hundred percent, but if your bank falters. And you're out of money. You could say, wait, the market's doing so well. How come the bank's in trouble? And your money's with the bank, not in the market. You're out of but, money. But aren't you banks know? FDIC insured? Aha, uh -huh. they are. But this isn't one of those types of situations where you're getting all that protection at a, at a bank. This is an investment bank. So it's different, Tony. Ah. So if, think about Lehman Brothers. Yeah. Lehman Brothers was a created structured notes. Sure. So these aren't new. These have been around the block. And yeah. so Lehman Brothers created structured notes and those, the whatever they were tied to wasn't going to zero, but Lehman Brothers did. So yeah, they, they did. So those people that held a structured note with Lehman as the underwriter, they became a creditor of Lehman Brothers in bankruptcy court, just like anyone else. Mm. So you can lose more than, than the whatever index you're tied to. That's the biggest risk. So there is risk. Credit, creditor risk, right. Yeah. The other obvious one is the upside limit. So if they're going to give you downside protection, they're not going to give you upside 
all the way. You're going to be limited. So if they're going to give you 15% downside protection, you might be limited to 15% on the upside. Each one's different. Or even you know, less. Right. I've heard can, maybe right. five or 10. Yeah, it right. depends. I, you know, I was looking at one the other day um, for a client. There's a 55% upside. Right. Only a, only a 10% downside. Sure. So, you know, they, they're a little concerned about the market going down. So they're like, I want more than 10% downside. All right. If we go 20, you're not going to get 55% on the upside. It's going to, right. you know, um, there's fees and commissions on these. You could buy these from a broker and you're going to pay a commission. Um, when I use them with my clients, uh, I'm not a broker, so I don't charge commissions. Uh, I charge a fee. So there's fees associated with it. You have to be aware of that. It's there. Nothing's free in this world. So you mm -hmm. have to, you're going to pay a fee to the underwriter. You're going to pay a fee to the manager that's managing your money. You mm -hmm. might pay a fee to a broker. And so you have to be aware of that. Um, whereas if you're buying a stock or a bond directly, there's no fee unless you're going through a broker. You mentioned it, liquidity, liquidity risk. If I buy an 18 month note, if I buy stock in the S&P 500, SPY, I buy the ticker SPY, which is basically S&P 500 ETF. And I say, I'm gonna hold it for 18 months. Boom, no problem. But if I, after six months, I say, you know what? I don't like it, I want out. I could sell the SPY on the market instantaneously. Next day, I got my money. With a note, doesn't work that way. If you're saying, I'm gonna lock it up for 18 months, it's not sold on the exchange. You, you can't type it in and buy it on Fidelity's right. website. You have to call up the company and say, hey, I want out. They're going to have to find a buyer. They're going to have to find what they call a secondary market. So who knows? It's in black and white. When you buy one of these, the secondary market's not very liquid. Yeah, and they can put in penalties uh, and things, and you might not be able to get out. So if you have an emergency and you did a two-year note, Mm -hmm. And, you know, eight months in, wow, hey, I've got a, I've got an emergency. I've got to cover this. You know, I've got this huge medical expense or I need a new car. You can't just tap into that money to get it. That's right. You can't. You could try, but you're not going to get what you want. Right. For instance, if you buy a, a, a buffered in a note with 15% um, upside and six months in, the market's up 20%. You're like, wow. I mean, I, I'm up 15% because I'm capped at 15. I should be able to sell this for 15% more than I got in. Good luck. You try and sell that, <laughs> yeah. you might not even get what you put in. Because right. people that are buying it are like, well, why are you selling? They know. And yeah. they, they, didn't, they didn't buy it originally. No. So they feast off of people's liquidity needs. So when you're buying this, you have to be aware of that and make sure you're not putting all your eggs in these baskets. Yeah, it has it to be money that you don't, you're not going to need or want to touch for that time period. That's right. So you have to make sure you don't, when you buy it, you don't get locked into something you can't get out of. Um, right. You can get out of them. They're more liquid than an annuity with the, the, the surrender charges are, are, are not there. Sure. But the liquidity of selling it, you, someone's got to buy it from you. You can't just, mm. you know. Interesting. Um, then there's the market risk, of course, just because you're buying a structured note uh, uh, with a buffer, it doesn't mean you don't have any market risk. The market can still go down 40% and if your right. buffer is only 10, you're still down 30. Right. And another one that people forget about, and they do the same with index annuities, any type of annuity, is yeah, you might be tied to the S&P or the Dow Jones or some sort of European index. And though if you own those outright, you get dividends. If you own the S&P 500, you get dividends. Now, you yeah. may not get a lot, but they can add up. You can get 2% maybe. If you own a structured note, you don't actually own it, so you're not getting the dividends. So you miss out on that dividend income over that timeline. So you have to factor that in because what you're paying for is the upside with the downside protection. The price is not only the limit to the upside, but the lack of dividends. So there's some downsides to these, Tony, that I mm. want people to be aware of. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that these are bad or good. Um, I'm just saying that there are some reasons that people may want to think twice about it. Now, I already mentioned, think about taxes. So you want to structure it so it's long-term, not short-term. I mean, you could get a short-term note, but I would recommend you think about, all right, I want long-term gains, so make it longer. 
um, you want to make sure your your structure a little tip with these if you're going to get into them structure them buy them from different companies don't put all of them in one bank just like you wouldn't buy all all the money or put all your money in one annuity company or insurance company or you wouldn't put all your deposits in one traditional bank you want to spread out the risk because like i mentioned the biggest downside to a buffered index buffered note is the bank going under and you losing your money so spread that out and then i would layer them and it's another tip i recommend you know maybe you only want an 18 month note but maybe you buy one and then a few months later you buy another and then another so you're getting <laughs> in you're not trying to time the market but you're getting sure. in at different times because that 18 month period is totally random. Like you don't know yeah. what's going to happen during that time. So layer them. It's like CDs. Remember how people ladder CDs, laddering CDs? Yeah, laddering. Yeah, I was just going to say, is that like laddering? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you can ladder structured notes or, or indexes, buffered, buffered notes, because you could say, well, I want 10% downside on this one. And then in a few months, I need 20% downside or 5% downside. So you can ladder these to get a re re risk reduction, diversification, and you know, just total uh, risk profile that suits your needs. And last point I want to make about these, Tony, is that um, as market condition changes, the banks change what they're offering. So mm. right now we're at highs. It's true, right? The market's at highs. So the focus on a lot of these buffered notes is downside protection. Downside protection, and people are willing to go and say. I want more downside protection than I want upside. Um, as we go down, you know, in the future, we'll have a correction. When you are in a correction, then you'll start seeing the structured notes are now focusing more on the upside. So the caps, the upside potential is going to be higher and the downside protection is going to be lower. And sure. that makes sense to me. So you kind of go with the flow. Yeah, you buy these things as the market conditions change. Sure. And as your needs change, which leads to the final question, who do you think these are appropriate for? Who's the ones that are interested in this? The answer, and this is why I'm talking about it, is people that are close to retirement. Retirees yep. tend to be the ones that are leaning toward these because they want risk reduction. They, they want, want to minimize risk. Yep, mm -hmm. that's the bottom line. And and as a financial advisor, uh, you, for most people, everybody's situation is different. For most people, as they get older, close to retirement or entering into retirement or in retirement, uh, you recommend, hey, minimize your risk. You don't want everything, you know, you don't want all your stock, especially in one, like one company like IBM, that's huge risk, right? That's to right. put it all, all your eggs in one basket. Uh, and, you know, just diversifying even within a, a stock portfolio might not be good because everything's still at risk if it's all in stocks. So you have to minimize that risk somehow. That's right? right. And a lot of people do a bond portfolio. So you can you could do these structured notes on your own. You can make a case and the data might say, you know, a 60 40 stock to bond portfolio is equivalent to buying a, st a structured note. You know, you, you don't have to pay the fees and get all with the fancy products. You can replicate this in a different way. So these aren't the be all end all. And you don't want to put all your money in these, but a portion of it. And People are getting fearful of bonds right now because interest rates are in flux. Because bonds have been, uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> bonds are, bonds are scary. Wow. Bonds. <laughs> Shivers. Ooh. I like it, Tony. Oh. Uh, you know. Bonds. Right. So pe people don't understand. <laughs> Bonds can go down in value, so they figure, oh, I'm going to move from stocks. To Apparently, bonds. they can go way down in value, they right? Can. They can. <laughs> but if you buy an individual bond, just straight up buy an individual bond, you'll get your money back if the company's still around, right? So, sure. So you can replicate these structured notes. They're not doing anything rocket science, yeah. But they're just making them easy for people, and just like an index annuity, you can replicate that on your own. It just takes a lot of effort in buying different products and derivatives. Bottom line, Tony, these aren't as um, complicated as you originally thought. They are not <laughs> simple. You know, you, you, they're not like, hey, this is just structured. No, buy. You know, it's not, it's not like buying a CD. There's some moving parts to it sure. that you have to be aware of. There's additional risks that people need to be aware of. 
Yeah. And anyone that's touting them saying this is the greatest thing, let's put all the money in there. I'm going to say right off the bat, that's probably not in your best interest. So you need to look at these with a cautious eye. They are relevant. They are valuable, particularly as you want to reduce your risk or diversify. So I'm telling people, give them a look. Don't jump feet first or head first into it. Kind of test the waters a little bit. Get involved with them, ladder them, layer them, whatever you want to call. And um, that's something that I do with my clients. It's something that I just wanted to share with people because I thought people are are starting to see this more and more. And then, and don't be fooled into thinking, oh, this is the newest thing. This is great. They're brand new. No, these have been around. They've gone through the cycles. They're nothing new. Um, don't jump on it because you think it's the next thing. It's not. It's not the next Bitcoin. Um, it's just a tool that people should be aware of. Sure. So you said... Uh, um... Basically, at the start of the show, you said structured notes, and and this is all I heard. <laughs> well, thank and then you in there, and then away. during that time, I thought about what kind of toppings I'd like on my pizza. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. Now, tell me this, Tony: if there was a structured note, <laughs> a buffered note that said, "Hey, you're going to get, we're gonna, you you give me a thousand dollars." I'll give you 2000 in 18 months if Domino sells more pizzas than Little Caesars. Wow. But if if it doesn't, you're getting 20% less back. So, I mean, this is that's a structured it's a risk. Note. That's just a structured note. I wow. just made okay. one up, right? Relevant right. to you to keep you awake. <laughs> okay, you you got right? my interest there. So, cuz so right people, now I'm thinking about is that feasible? Right. Wait, 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 little Caesars. Why, why not? Stop, you know, Pizza Hut. Dan! You know? <laughs> Dan! <laughs> See, I'm, I got you excited. But I'm saying so these, these can be designed to fit whatever you want. So look for something that meets your needs and then get it. Don't just buy the one because you see it. Right. You, know, you, you could be selective. So, yep. Makes sense. I appreciate your time, Tony. I thank you. Yeah, it was fun. Staying awake. Hopefully, you learned something about structured <laughs> I, notes and I did. notes. I did. And Dan, you, you surprised me. Dan, Dan, he's our man. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Tony. I'm going to let my kids take us out and remind right. everyone, this is not investment advice. Good luck. Make sure you give me a call. If you have any questions about this best way, subscribe to this YouTube channel and you'll get an update every time I put a new video up. Thanks, Tony. Have a good day. All matters discussed in today's show are for informational purposes only. This show is not investment advice. Dan Whittle, nor Dolphin Financial Group are affiliated or endorsed by any government agency. Investment advisory services are offered through Dolphin Wealth Management, Inc., a registered investment advisor in the state of Florida. Insurance products and services are offered through Dolphin Insurance, Inc. Dolphin Wealth Management, Inc. and Dolphin Insurance, Inc. are affiliated companies doing businesses as Dolphin Financial Group. You should talk to someone at Dolphin Financial Group before implementing any of these strategies or ideas.